live in a culture that values thinking. Thinking <coughs> is all the credit. But here's the deal. You can't think your way to the top. To be a successful leader, it requires integrating intellect with what I call intuitive insight. Let me share a story with you about how I came to that realization. I was in my mid-30s, an engineer with the U.S. Department of Transportation. Now, if I do say so myself, I, I was an accomplished overthinker. Today I'm a recovering overthinker, but then I was an accomplished overthinker. And in that engineering organization, I had done pretty well for myself. I had thought my way into a mid-level management position. But I could see the executives, and I could tell that they had something that I didn't have. And I couldn't figure out what it was. I learned to think less in order to live more. I learned to integrate intellect with my intuitive insight. Today, I speak on five leadership pitfalls of overthinking, but I only have time to share one, and here's the one I've chosen. Overthinkers, they manage with fact and figures, but leaders with intuitive insight, they lead with vision. And what are the components of that vision? There are three. First, leaders understand that they have to develop deep expertise in their subject area. Second, leaders with intuitive insight, they understand that they have to listen to both of the voices in their head. Yes, that intellectual voice that is constantly analyzing, rationalizing, organizing, and theorizing. And that intuitive voice that is soft and quiet and wise. And third and most importantly, leaders with intuitive insight, they understand that it's not enough to hear the two voices. They have to have the courage to follow where they lead. Now let me share one last story with you. About a year and a half ago, my husband Mike and I, we were hiking in the mountains of New Zealand. Now on the second day of our hike, a drenching, pounding storm blew up. Mike and I spent the night in our cabin listening to the trees bang against the walls of the cabin. The wind swirled and sounded like it was going to take the roof right off the top. And in fact, they delayed the start of the hike the next day due to safety concerns. But when it was time to finally go, Mike and I were ready. We were literally wearing everything in our backpacks. I had on two pairs of pants, three shirts, a waterproof jacket with a hood, zipped up under my chin, backpack, waterproof cover on the backpack, and hiking poles. Ready. Now as we were about to step out into the weather, Mike trundled over to the wall where every morning they posted the weather forecast. And here's what the weather forecast said. Rain, snow, hail at lower elevations, gale force winds, becoming fine. We looked at each other, becoming fine? Really? And I will tell you that Mike and I did hike through rain, snow, hail, and wind that day. But toward the end of the afternoon, the clouds broke, and the sun became visible between the mountain peaks. And it, in fact, it became fine. So it strikes me that that's what it's like when we're following the leadership of our intuitive insight. All around us, every day, is swirling all that intellectual activity, all the things we need to do, the places we need to go, the people we need to meet. It's like that rain, snow, hail, and wind. But if we can find the courage to follow where our intuitive insight leads, it will become fine. It's about taking that intellect that we prize so highly and our intuitive insight, integrating them, and that's where successful leadership comes from. So if you think that you can think your way to the top, I just have one thing to say. Think again.